screen is. Okay. So who? who... Okay. Hi, everybody. So good to see all of you. Even you, Leon. It's really good to see you as well. <laughs> On the blank screen behind you. Okay. Um, today, I'm looking out into the world through my eyes, and I am seeing in the world not a real good view of uh, peace and love and joy. I'm sure you all have some concerns too about what's going on in the world. When all of that was going on and I was starting to see myself viewing things in the outer and making outer judgments, as uh, we, we humans tend to do, that seems to be the way we're wired, um, I suddenly saw and saw this as a uh, kind of a kind of a, a, a voice from from beyond from God. A Netflix movie. I was trying to find something that both uh, Natasha and I would enjoy because she tends not to like science fiction too much and uh, or or at all. So I thought I'll try to find something that uh, that both of us could enjoy. I came across a little four part movie that uh, I thought might work. And here was the title of it in case you're interested on Netflix. If you have Netflix, it's called All the Light We Cannot See. And I thought, man, that that's, a, you know, spoken to me directly from spirit all the light we cannot see. I'll give you a quick little synopsis without being any spoilers in there. It's a movie about uh, a uh, man who is the one of the curators of the Paris Museum. And in it, it's got dinosaurs and all the things you can imagine. And one of the things it has in there is uh, valuable gems which belong to the the country of Paris and this is taking place in the 30s and 40s as the Germans have marched into Paris and it keeps jumping back and forth before then after then and so forth this man has lost his wife she's passed away he's raising a daughter and the daughter is blind He's teaching her everything he can to be able to contact the world. He owns a shortwave radio and he allows her to put on the headphones and tune in programs all over the world on the shortwave. You know, that was real popular at one time, shortwave radio. She tunes in and she finds a voice on the radio, a man who describes himself as the professor and he listened and she listens to him and he tells her all about not feeling like if you cannot see in the outer that you're missing very much he says that all the light here in this time of darkness in the world is within all the light you cannot see. Well, she jumps right on that and loves hearing that. So she listens to the, to the professor. Somewhere else out in the world, as it turns out in, uh, in Germany, a young man is listening to the same program. Now that's all I'm going to tell you about it. It's a, a, a quite interesting program about, uh, about these characters. They are well-developed characters. I wouldn't say it's the greatest movie I ever saw, but it's definitely a very touching, inspiring little movie. And I enjoyed it a lot. Okay. Bye, John. We'll see ya.
Okay. I can stay for a couple of minutes more. Thank you okay. so much, my friends. Okay. Bye. I started thinking about that and think, uh, and that title hit me just at the right moment when I caught myself going into a mode of uh, uh, trepidation, fear, a little bit of fear in there, so forth, looking out at my world around me, your world around you, all of us together, seeing what is going on in the Middle East, seeing what has been going on for quite some time in Ukraine and seeing what is going on right here with our politicians in our country. Uh, I, I, I loosely call them politicians. Uh, clowns is more like it, you know, with their little uh, show that they're doing. And, they, and everybody has an opinion about that, but we know what opinions are. They're like racehorses. So um, having said all that, Viewing in the outer is not at all a pleasant thing. Not at all to look in the outer. But you know, this is a time in our history very much like a time a hundred years ago in the 1920s when we saw a world that had just gone through what was called the war to end all wars. And we saw the, the world being carved up and uh, changed to a great degree. We saw all of these things. Well, we didn't. Uh, you know, most of us were either just small children or we weren't born yet to see these things. But we can look back in history and we can see that there are times that have been similar. We have seen the rise of uh, would-be tyrants would be authoritarians who gave this world uh, a, a real jolt. It was in the 20s, uh, the uh, 1920s, when we saw all of this happening. And here we are in, uh, in the 2020s, and we see similar things happening on our planet all over the place. The difference is the media. We have instant access to so much that is going on in the world. Instant access that we did not used to have. It used to be days, weeks, months before some of these stories passed out uh, in the 1920s. Now it is instant. We can see it all over the world everything that's going on. We can see it live and in person. But the thing that hasn't changed is the lies, the truths, the innuendos, the opinions. All of this is still the same as it was then. Oh, we may be receiving it faster, but it's still the same sort of information, blurred information, information that comes to us from sources, many times sources that we love to listen to because they, they tell us the opinions that we already hold. Or we go outside of that and we start trying to listen to others. And if you're anything like me, you listen to them and then you just go, that can't be right. And you tune them out again. It's going back and forth, back and forth. This creates for all of us a lot of sense of tenuousness in our world, temerity in our world, a sense of loss in our world for what we once thought was so easy grab hold of and hold on to. We had friends all around us who were maybe of different viewpoint, but we were all citizens of one united country. I'm not so sure we're there right now, or at least that's the way it appears in the outer. 
But in the inner, in the inner, we're still connected to one another in the light. You know, this has been going on not just in the last hundred years, but it's been going on for several thousand years. Let me, let me quote something to you from a psalm. Psalm of David. The 139th psalm, we call it. The 12th verse. He's speaking to God directly, to the Lord, who we who he would call El Adonai, the great Lord. And he says this, even in the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light and light are alike to you. And I'm going to tell you a real quick little story. I used to, uh, before I was a minister, I used to attend a church in, first a church in Hawaii, and then I moved back to Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. I started attending the church there, the Unity Church there, and I had a uh, teacher named Wanda Sykes. She was, uh, uh, she was a licensed Unity teacher, and she taught classes. And I remember having a great awakening inside of me when she said this in our class. She said, the true name for Satan is God. Call whop, that hit me right between the eyeballs. And I thought, wow, she is speaking from a unified vision of the world, just like in this psalm. Even light and dark are alike to you. Because if we really look at the absolutism of God, there isn't a God that of the light and a God of the dark, or even a ruler of the light and a ruler of the dark. It's all one. It's all oneness. And that's where we need to keep our focus on our connection. We need to keep our focus and connection on that once oneness that absolutism and not this idea of a relative world that we see in the outer. In the outer, we see light and we see dark. We see good and we see evil. And these are just names we've given to something. One person's good is another person's evil. It just goes on and on like this. I have friends among you. I don't agree with, and you don't agree with some of the views that I have, and that's okay. I think it's a wonderful thing that we live in a country where we can have openly opposing viewpoints, and no one seems to want to grab a gun or call up some police force that will come and drag that person away. None of that's going on. We're very fortunate in a lot of countries and a lot of jurisdictions in this world right now, that still occurs. I heard so-and-so say this, go get them. The police show up on their door and take them away. And they're never heard of again. Not a good view at all whatsoever. Now, the idea behind that is let's create a oneness by getting rid of all the others, as opposed to let's accept and love each other so that we can create a oneness. That's much better. That is true diversity. And it's, it's, it's true to the, to the ideals of this country that we live in. Yes, we'd love to spread these ideals. But it's difficult to do when we take a stand for one side or the other in somebody else's argument. It's a little easier for us to just stay in the center of our own being and express and bathe in that light, in that which sees light and dark as the same. Well, it's hard for us as humans to wrap our heads around that idea. 
because everything we see in the outer tells us, but there are differences. Yes, in the outer, that's the view. But this is a world that we have created. It's almost, it's almost as though we've created a holistic or a, a hologram, holographic world in the outer. It's as though we are on a giant holodeck, for those of you who are uh, Star Trek fans, that we created. And at any moment, just like that holodeck, we can say, computer, and it will disappear in a flash. You know, that's exactly what happened with Jesus when he came to the idea that, that the ideas in, the, the, in his world that he lived in were a, a view that, that wasn't really holding to the absolute truth that is, that is existent in God in what he called his father, his daddy, his Abba. He viewed it and he said, he, he is reported as having said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like a streak of lightning. He tells us earlier that heaven is within you, that heaven is in your mind. Having said that, then he says, in my mind, the idea of an opposing force to God was gone in an instant, and I saw only oneness. That is the view we should take. A view that even though the outer is showing us in our outer world that we have created on this giant holodeck, everything that we see in the outer is merely just, just an illusion if you will, an illusory so-called truth, an illusory so-called truth. It's not necessary to have that view at all. If we can stay within, stay within and allow our consciousness to dwell and bathe and bask in the light of oneness. Because that's what God truly is. God is both the light and the dark, if that's the way we want to view it. Or we can just call it the light and stay within that. So, is this going to change anything for a lot of people in the, in the world that we live in? Not yet. Not yet it hasn't. But, you know, just like A Course in Miracles says, it says that it says that uh, this is a this is a compulsory course. When you choose to take it, is up to you. That's the view that we take in unity. The idea of oneness, unity, is a compulsory idea and a compulsory state of mind. When you decide to view it that way, it's totally up to you. It's totally up to each and every one of us. Should we look at others and say, uh, we see an other and we oppose uh, it, or we are in, uh, in some kind of uh, contention with other people and other ideas? No, we should say, it's acceptable if you wish to have these ideas, but it's not necessarily anything that I have to hold as my ideas but my love for you will not change and it will not go away. I will not turn you into something outside of myself. I will include you within myself. Doing this eventually, eventually, maybe in several generations, but eventually will heal the world. We will come once again around to the idea of peace and love and joy to all. God bless.